Market's actually firming up right here. You heard uh, Steve characterize uh, Powell as being dovish enough. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think uh, I think Chair Powell threaded the needle quite well. He gave uh, investors uh, what they needed to hear. He, you know, markets are fully pricing in two, maybe three more rate cuts this year. And, you know, after the speech, they still think two or three more rate cuts. So uh, I think he got that just right. And uh, he didn't front run the rest of the FOMC. Uh, you know, there's a lot of disparate views, as we've been hearing over the past couple of days, about, you know, what policy should be like going forward. And I don't think he got ahead of that uh, to any significant degree. So I think he got it, you know, just right. So just right means how many rate cuts would you expect this to uh, result in for the rest of this year? I think two or three. I mean, my view is this uh, trade war, the uh, president's trade war is doing significant economic damage. I mean, it's clearer overseas. Uh, European economy is already arguably in recession. The Asian economy is really struggling. China would be doing a lot worse, except they have uh, the ability to use a lot of stimulus, monetary and fiscal stimulus. And now in the U.S., we're feeling it. I mean, you saw yesterday's numbers on manufacturing. Manufacturing is in recession. We saw some big downward revisions to employment growth across the board, lots of different industries. So the economy's, I think, uh, weakening. So, uh, you know, I do think uh, uh, that uh, we need to see more rate cuts here. And two or three seems logical at this point. But as Chair Powell pointed out, I mean, there's no playbook here. Uh, hard to know what the president's going to do. Uh, he could end this tomorrow with a tweet. So they've got to be reactive. So there could be more or less. It depends on what the president does. Uh, speaking of the president, a uh, new tweet here a moment ago. Um, as usual, the Fed did nothing. It is incredible that they can speak, quote, uh, without knowing or asking what I'm doing, which will be announced shortly. We have a very strong dollar and a very weak Fed. I will work brilliantly, quote, with both, and the U.S. will do great. I think we're waiting for the rest of that tweet. Uh, we'll see. Was he, did he think that this was a policy meeting? I mean, they, they weren't, they weren't going to do anything, right? Uh, it's, not, it's certainly not a vote today. Uh, but, Mark, I do wonder, I mean, you mentioned uh, the benchmark revisions on labor, uh, the pullback in yep. business investment, slowest rate of buybacks in a year and a half. I mean, what's the likelihood we get a sub-100 NFP print? Uh, I, I think it's very possible. Uh, you know, I think businesses, you know, I, I do think the, uh, here's an interesting point, the, uh, the survey, uh, the, when the Bureau of Labor Statistics does a survey, it's the 12th, it's the week that includes the 12th of the month. And that's, of course, the week where we saw, I think, the 800-point drop in the Dow, a lot of volatility in, in markets. Uh, and I think that may have affected business decisions around hiring. It hasn't affected their decisions around layoffs. I mean, we, we got unemployment insurance claims data. That still looks good. So layoffs haven't, haven't picked up, and that's a good sign. But I do think they're pulling back on hiring, and we could get a sub-100 print. The other thing is the August number is always pretty squirrely because uh, a lot of big companies uh, don't report on time. They report late because people are on vacation. So you can always get a very weird number in August. So another reason why it might be sub-100.